but uh, now I, I think uh, we are we are more precise. I, I think it's not the the, the most uh, important point. Okay, you see the procedure is over. We inflate the the balloon. You see the. Are you sure that your uh, running structure is uh, is is? is, is Can, can you show the can you show the running searcher, yeah, please? I, I, we, we are you showing show? you the rolling searcher. Can you searcher? focus? Yes, I. Monique, faut que je focus. Déclenche l'optique. Oui. Re push the balloon. Push the balloon. Push the balloon. Push, push, push it. On veut voir la suture, voilà. OK. So we we can we always put a drain uh, behind the suture. Oui. Some questions, some more comments, Thierry or oh, Claude? Uh, it's excellent, it's excellent. No, no, uh, it was. We leave to go back to Roland and con congratulations because it was a very nice procedure. Thank you so much. Roland? Okay, we are, we have completed the dissection of the seminal crossroad, as you can see. We don't insist too much on the, the, the edge between the seminals and the base of the prostate because it is not necessary for the dissection. The, the specimen will be complete enough even if we do not open these areas. And this is another way to reduce the risk for margins uh, with uh, lesions present at the base of the prostate. And what you see here lifted is the opening uh, of the de Nonvilliers, but in fact, the Nonvilliers is still uh, adhesion to the base of the prostate because it was uh, recognized early in the dissection and we, we passed immediately below it. In the midline you have the rectum and we have slightly developed the, the fossae on each side just to have the medial landmark of the upper pedicles of the prostate that we will find later uh, when we will have crossed the... the the bladder neck from the anterior aspect, so that we will now leave the, the posterior aspect like it is. Uh, you can drop the, the seminals and leave them there. You see that uh, later on we will come through this uh, thick layer here, which is the anterior aspect of the nonvillier of or the vesicoprostatic muscle, as it is called actually, and we will immediately find this. Uh, prepared plane, which is another advantage uh, of the, the, this approach in terms of uh, anatomic landmarks. So we will drop the incision now and move to the development of the anterior aspect. The, the, as I mentioned, the lens trocar is placed above the umbilicus in order to allow us a very high incision uh, which requires the scissors to work through the upper right trocar. This is the, the midline trocar, which is now uh, useless for a few minutes. And uh, I like to have a very high incision on the umbilical ligaments because uh, this avoids any confusion inside of the... Can you hold this one like this? And... Uh, This allows us to avoid any trouble with the, the bladder fat. So that what I catch here is the right umbilical ligament. And uh, there is uh, an assistance by a counter push by the assistant. And we will immediately divide this uh, right umbilical ligament. And just behind it, as you can see, you find immediately the areolar space of the red shoes, so that there is no confusion about the level of cutting. And uh, 
we can immediately develop the peritoneal incision in the direction of the internal inguinal ring that you can see on, on the right side here with the merging of the vas and the seminal pedicle. So this is a, a blunt development essentially an, in an avascular plane and uh, in case of uh, lymph node dissection we would just turn the edge here and go m cranially along the vessels in the same plane so that uh, this is quite simple. Uh, what we have to pay attention, of course, in uh, this lateral incision is the epigastric pedicle that we will see maybe a little later. But actually we can just nicely and gently develop this plane. You see that the, the bladder is falling down immediately, surrounded by its fat. Uh, yes, no contact. Okay, better so. And you see immediately the, the pelvic brim with the pubic bone here. But we will go deep la later on. We will now equalize our incision on the medial aspect and on the left aspect. Oui, je n'ai pas employé le liga jusqu'à présent. On va contrôler tout ça. We need some control on the cranial aspect, on the caudal aspect of our incisions here. You see that flap is coming very easily. And Thereafter, we will be able to develop that space almost bluntly. There is a major Roland, uh, are you, uh, Roland, there was a discussion that you are performing a lymph node dissection afterwards. Has this any impact uh, uh, on your incision lines now at this point, whether you not perform a moment, lymphadenectomy or not? At this moment, not, because I could... Uh, you have seen we had a trap here with the epigastric pedicle coming very close so that uh, we had to remain medial to it but otherwise uh, this uh, approach is uh, quite safe. Uh, as I mentioned if we had to perform uh, lymph node dissection and it's not the case in this patient because he's gleason 6 strictly and PSA 4 so that uh, we won't perform but otherwise we would just uh, extend this incision cranially along the vessels. You see how, how short this approach can be in terms of uh, time allotted to, this, uh, to these maneuvers and this compares, I think, favorably uh, with the time allotted to the development of the preperitoneal space uh, from the very beginning of the procedure. I take the bipolar. And I move. And as soon as this flap has been released, as as I, I been come back with the scissors in the, the, scissors the medial trocar and we'll work from there for the, all the remaining maneuvers of the, the procedure. We just need here to develop a little bit the dissection lateral to the bladder to avoid having uh, large curtains in front of the lateral trocars and avoid any misplacement of instruments, but otherwise it's uh, quite simple to develop.
changement de équipe. Now there is a time devoted to developing the, the red sea space and defatting the anterior aspect of the prostate and of the bladder. This can be time consuming in some patients, but this is true for any approach. And uh, it's certainly not specific to this uh, dissection of the peritoneum. We are already here in the right side at the level of the endopelvic fascia covering the levator and the lateral aspect of the prostate. And we will do the symmetrical maneuver on the left so that we will remain on the midline with the fat covering of the anterior aspect of the prostate containing the superficial dorsal vein. We have here a prominent synthesis which can be troubleshooting sometimes but I hope it won't disturb us too much. And getting this fat free from the anterior aspect of the prostate is interesting not only for the vision on the prostate itself but also to define when pulling cranially this uh, fatty flap uh, helps to define the bladder neck because this is the the place where this uh, fat becomes more adherent to the anterior aspects of the bladder So, actually we have uh, so far satisfying landmarks, maybe a little too much fat on this aspect. We have here something interesting which has to be shown and respected, which is probably uh, an internal arterial branch running along the pubic bone and uh, you never know, it might be uh, an accessory or even the main pudendal artery so that it has to be respected carefully. So we, in, in my conventional approach, I prefer now to open the endopelvic fascia to have a clear view on the lateral aspect of the prostate. And this can be done in a combination of sharp and blunt maneuvers, you see already large veins of the lateral aspect of the prostate covered by the prostatic fascia and what we have on the but lateral... But you are also now trying to... You, you are trying to keep the levator fascia on, on the muscle, yeah? On the muscle, yes. So, the so you are not incising and, and to... Sh uh, well, stays well on the muscle. It's a combination of sharp and blunt dissection and uh, it is aiming at uh, the so, lateral... So, so it's interesting, you are not no more incising just the endopelvic fascia laterally, so you are starting from the bladder neck more or less. Yes, because it's a place where it is easy yes. to push away so now it's open. and you see that progressing codally, now you are progressing codally I will come uh, in an area where it is generally thicker and where I will need to combine incision with the pushing, the blunt pushing. And uh, at this level there may be sometimes perforating branches uh, for strange reasons, unexplained, uh, sometimes more present on the left side. And uh, we are actually reaching the level of the puboprostatic ligament on the left, which is uh, a place where we will temporarily stop our dissection. We have also to keep in mind in this patient that uh, we have mainly an anterior tumor as shown on the MRI, and we have a, a very large covering of uh, the apex 
with this uh, structure containing the Santorini and limited on each side by the puboprostatic or even pubovesical ligaments as uh, said by some, some of us in the literature. So we can do the same maneuver on the right and what, what is your attitude to cutting of the puboprostatic ligaments? Well, I think we will see it soon because uh, I will try, in spite of the, the anterior position of the tumor, to, to have some control of the Santorini early in the procedure. Uh, look up, uh, because we had some opening there. And the interest of uh, this uh, early liberation of the caudal aspect of the apex is to make the prostate free on its medial axis in order to be mobilized nicely during the dissection of the bundles without excessive tractions. Oh, it's not bad. It's, it's here. Nothing to see. And uh, I will soon have to divide slightly the puboprostatic in order to proceed with this dissection because as you can see the apical coverage is very wide in this patient. Of course, uh, when you start incising the puboprostatic, you are in a very close relationship with the surrounding veins of the Santorini, so that it may need some control, but otherwise you can proceed. Most of these small venous bleedings are limited by the pressure of the pneumoperitoneum so that you can proceed towards the apex. Are you planning to put a stitch there? Not yet. Uh, we will do it differently as soon as we are happy with the dissection. So you see that the apex is still covered by the prostatic fascia, but we can proceed slowly to push away the sphincter and the, first the levator and then probably the pelvic floor muscles containing the sphincteric structures. But we are slowly progressing towards the apex. Do you have anything uh, in the rectum? No, nothing. No, nothing. And we will do exactly the same maneuver on the left now.
So you are not taking this into your stitch? Not yet. You're trying to, uh, to do this? Uh, not, uh -huh. not yet, because I need to, to have a, a better vision of, of the apical termination first. And you see that as well as on the other side, it is still covered by the prostatic fascia, the visceral fascia of the prostate. And we might develop this plane here in front of the anterior commissura of the, the prostate. But this is a, a blunt dissection, which is rather uh, bloody generally, because it's essentially blunt, so that we prefer to proceed gently on each side. Give me a, a, a close-up, yeah. And just progressing to the Could midline. Could be a right angle instrument helpful here to no, for your dissection? not so far. I don't really need it. And again, uh, the blunt dissection would be a risk, so that I prefer progressing slowly like this towards the apex. And uh, you retry, and you see that the anterior attachment of the prostate becomes something acceptable for an instrument. And uh, right now we will place a penetrated forceps. Uh, no, just uh, una pincha. Uh, um, Joan, uh, maybe maybe this one. Yes, we have it. So we will use a, a 20 millimeter penetrated forceps, which is very usual, but I need a ratchet on it. So we have to change the handle. Sorry for that. We need a, this one. OK. I uh, know it's not working. No, we have to remount it. Just a second to have the forceps ready. Now it is. And you can prepare 20 centimeters of this. So, uh, Roland, we were watching you doing the stitch, and I think soon Cora will give his lecture uh, okay, okay. here. No, no problem. But you see this that is not a problem. So this we, we is have you. Interesting, I think, because you see that we can come here on the lateral aspect of the, the apex, on the right with the fixed. So you are a part of the forceps. You are a fan of the of the ligature. No, uh, is no, this no, a no. good uh, no, no, good uh, so, way so, for doing? Not so far. And uh, we place this forceps, <laughs> and before closing it, we we move ventrally in order to be really in contact with the bone so that you see the amount of tissue we still have on the prostate side before closing the instrument and uh, the length of the forceps makes that it's unable to catch the urethra and uh, which is actually still well on. yes how sure are you that you're not biting into the anterior aspect of the urethra with this huge forceps? Well, I, I know by experience that uh, we, ha we are far enough, the urethra is there behind, and I know that the, the forceps is not strong enough to catch such a big structure, so that uh, the, the, the forceps is too weak at the tip to catch such a structure containing a catheter, which, as a matter of fact, is still no. uh, the, the catheter is still free. It is actually checked by Francesco. We are now able to divide. Uh, but but you see, you have so nice anatomy, and uh, why is it why is this necessary? Because you could also easily place a stitch directly uh, where the end of, where the tip of your uh, clamp this, is? This is a good question. Thank you for asking it. And you will see the answer just after the division of that anterior commissura. Um, maybe in that case, we will combine hemostasis for the, black the back flows 
with the, the division as uh, close as possible to the, to the forceps and we will place a stitch on the forceps just thereafter. And so this is now Ligashur's time. Yes, this is Ligashur's time. Uh, generally, I do it with the, with the scissors, but this is a very bad moment for the scissors because you are using a lot of uh, diatomy, and this is not good for the sharpness of your scissors uh, when you need them in a cold use later on. And mainly during the bundle dissection, sometimes they are already out of order. So we can proceed towards the tip of the forceps like this. And uh, we'll see how it, it's looking like. Maybe one more catch. And after this, you will go to the bladder neck, I assume. Yes, uh, after the stitch, of course. Yes. Uh, because, n but now the yeah, I'm not confident enough in this tool to, for dissection purpose, so that I will go on with the scissors. I need to throw this one. No, no, I have them. I can, I know. We have them, but... Uh, Do we have the slides for Cora, just yeah. as information? Are they ready? Are your slides ready? I see. So, okay, so probably I will... Uh, I think we, we will just uh, leave you for a moment and Cora will give her lecture and we right. see everything but probably depends on, the screen, the on one screen. Yeah. We just need... If it is preserved or not so far, we don't know. After, we are now ending at the tip of the forceps, as you can see. The drawback of this approach is, of course, that the, the apex is naked, and mainly naked, not here, where, where it is still covered by the prostatic fascia, but naked here in the surrounding structures of the urethra. The apex is not open, but it is naked. That means that if you have tumor at this level, you have tumor in contact. On its caudal attachment, and uh, logically, we will go keep on making it free on this axis when we will proceed with the bladder neck just thereafter. But before this, we need to, to complete the maneuver on the caudal side of this commissura and place the stitch. What we have here in direct view are the pillars of the urethra on each side and mm. the urethra itself on the midline still intact as you can see. So we will now first clean the lens and then place the stitch. No. Here is the stitch, 20 with yeah. one knot and the same color of but, the thread. But this is not biasing. No problem. If it's okay, we do it now, prepare now, 20, 20? Yeah. Okay. Uh, prepare 22. So that we are 22, so, so that we are safe in any case. And the second needle holder. Thank you. 
So we will now answer the question about the stitching. You see that the, all the Santorini is squeezed in the forceps and uh, the length of the forceps, as you have seen, is uh, convenient to end just at the anterior aspect of the urethra. Sorry, I have to move my trocars a little caudal. And uh, in the classical tying of the Santorini, I was always wondering about the depths of the catch here when this is uh, still intact. So that you see here there is no question, you just catch the structure at the tip of the forceps. This is one catch caudal. And then you move your stitch cranially along the forceps in order to finish with a knot far away from the anterior aspect of the urethra and hence far away from the anastomosis. You just make a figure of eight avoiding to pass through the, through the forceps because this can be a, a poltergeist effect. And uh, you just need to, yes, okay, to prepare your first knot before releasing the, the forceps. Yeah. Better like this. The short leg is there in the back. Okay, that's fine. And I will get ready to tie the knot close to it just before we release the forceps, which is now. So you see that with my right hand I keep the tension on the knot to avoid any release of tension while I'm preparing for tying my second knot with a simple key. Move it away. And this is done. Now I can safely do a third one if I need it. And you see that there is few questions to ask yourself about the level of that stitch because it is completely defined by the placement of the forceps. Scissors. No, no, this one. Any question about all this? Okay. So the same uh, Johan forceps for the lateral trocar on the right and uh, some access to the catheter. You can now release it. Okay, no, no. Leave it like this. Prepare a cocker on the catheter side like this and some collision here. Okay. Yes, okay. okay. And uh, yeah, it's a very limited catch in the beginning. Okay, fine. Can you irrigate and just pull up by pushing down there? And uh, yeah, we can start with this.
picture. Yeah, of course. Okay. On a really cold now. Did he? On dirait, oui. Possible. Oui.
blender. Yeah, this one. Okay. Uh, deflate the balloon. Elle est dure, oui, elle est très dure. Ok, laisse à venir. Et maintenant tu tires midi. Ah, not much medium low, much better like this. Okay, we are in the pastille layer. Okay. As soon as yeah, as soon as this is done, you can release the traction first. Keep it closed. Release the cat. Wow. This one. This one. There it is. Okay. Just
and again lift. Okay. Can you aspirate here? Cranial, bladder. bladder, cranial, and ventral attachment, so that as far as we are not at the level of the seminals, we have a bleeder there. We will divide this with ligature. And thereafter, I will use five millimeter clips. Yeah, sorry. Okay, great. Ok, on va égaliser à gauche. We can start. Yeah. What is wrong? Over pressure. He's, he's pushing. Everything okay? Yeah. Sorry. Just expose laterally a little more. Attends, peut-être comme ça. 
pour, pour prendre un peu plus près. Attends, je vais te l'exposer. Voilà, ok, parfait. Okay, now we, 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 mer we, are, we reach the level of the seminal attachment here, so that the, the blade uh, between the denonvilliers here and the visceral fascia there becomes the bundle itself. So now we need a fault control, and we'll maybe check that one once more because it doesn't seem to be controlled. And then we can proceed. I will check if we are equivalent on both sides. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. And we can keep on the left side. Already ready, which is a mistake. Mm -hmm. okay. No, I will. Okay. You see that we have. We are back uh, with you. You are with us, yes. We, we, you were with the picture, but now yes. you are on audio again. Uh, yes, this one has dropped. Yes. And you have seen that we have divided the the bladder neck and as expected we found the posterior plane already dissected and we developed the the hemostasis of the upper prostatic pedicles uh, which are in fact the, the circles common with the bladder neck so that so far we could use a, a diathermic tool but now we are truly at the level of the the, the bundles on the posterior and lateral aspect of the prostate, you see the, the base of the prostate covered with the denonvillier uh, on the medial aspect here and on the lateral aspect we have the prostatic fascia so that we will uh, divide the branches progressively from this level and of course uh, they are quite long at the base of the prostate and narrowing thereafter so that at the very beginning we can take some safety distance from the, the prostate itself because we have to keep in mind that this patient needs a cure for cancer and also has some concern uh, about erectile preservation at 49 so that we have to negotiate a, a surgical compromise between a cure and preservation so that uh, in this case I think it's uh, an indication for interfacial dissection progressing on both 
medial and lateral aspects of the upper attachments until the bundles falls down laterally. You see that we didn't divide the prostatic visceral fascia on the lateral aspect or even on the anterior aspect. We keep the, the coverage with the fascia on the lateral aspect. Uh, Francesco? Okay, you see that we are progressing along the, the left bundle and uh, the dissection we made. Roland, some, uh, some, Roland. Yes. Some people are worrying about uh, the fact that you are maybe uh, intracapsular uh, here. Yes, I, I had the same yeah, feeling yeah. and I so will. We, we saw some. Uh, have you seen some acini? Yeah. This, is, this, is, this is probably the capsule of a prostate, uh, that yes. part. Yes, yeah. what, what's there, yeah. yes. I will catch it again and start again here. Yeah. Um,
Roland, this is yes, we are related. completing, as you can see, we have completed the, the nerve sparing on both sides and the prostate is totally free except for its uh, caudal attachment with the urethra. We can now retrieve the catheter till the level of the division and uh, what we should find just behind is the terminal plate of the Nonvilliers, but it was already far dissected, so the prostate is free. And uh, as you can see, uh, we'll be see it later on the specimen, except the small error that uh, we were getting aware at the same time as you were. Uh, we have a, a very nice prostate surface everywhere uh, with uh, some safety covering also with regard to the safety of the, the margins. Can you show the apex, please? Hold on. Yeah, uh, we will the site uh, we'll of have the prostate uh, out later, uh, after. Okay, Vito wants frozen section so that we will open first, take it out, and then move back to the, the anastomosis. So this is butterfly hunting. Something remaining behind, as you said. It's at the level of the seminoles, I think. Yes. The base, the last. It's okay. It's okay. It was the. Small remnant of the de Nonvilliers. Yeah, that's sure. No problem. Cut. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, Roland. We. Oui. Yes. Oui. Why did yes. you? Yes. Uh, about uh, time of uh, extraction of specimen. Do you use to, to, to remove it before anastomosis? To, no, to no, the generally the I leave it for the end, but uh, oh. here there was an exceptional demand for having the margins immediately. <laughs> okay, so you are waiting for results of frozen section? No, uh, what is this? No, no, not yet. We will do a, a stitch in the midline with this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, the second needle holder. A drip on the left. Yes. 
Can you push on the bulb? Yes, that's nice. So we can see the posterior wall of the urethra and just catch the tissue behind it so that we achieve a eustage. Show me the proximal end right here. Roland? I'm with you. Roland, it's Rocco's technique? Yes, it's the, the initial Rocco's technique. Uh, using the remnants of the Nonvilliers to attach the posterior plate, uh, which belongs basically to the same layer. And uh, by this means supporting uh, a little better the posterior wall of the urethra, which may be contributing to earlier continence. This should be tested in a prospective randomized way, of course, but uh, intuitively it's uh, relevant to support the posterior aspect of the sphincter because we know from the histochemical studies made by Myers that this part of the sphincter is quite thin. So that if it drops behind the urethra, we can understand that uh, it doesn't help early continence. So you see this is a, a U-stitch made on the midline and just approximating this remaining structures. We might also do it with the other layer actually called the vesicoprostatic, but uh, this changes the presentation of the anastomosis. Now, th th these legs are a little long because I was not ready. We, we will correct this. Okay, get in, get in. I will play the hairdresser a little bit. Okay, this is one. And this is two. <laughs> okay, now I will take the, the stitch for the anastomosis. Uh, also, make this a little shorter. Roland. I'm ready, I'm with you. We will now start uh, the anastomosis. In this case, for example, yes. without waiting results. Yes. Do, do you have to wait results of frozen section before starting the suture or not? No, I wouldn't do it. I'm quite confident with the way we were dealing with the bundles. Um, I know, I think that the... Okay. Okay, but if the, if the frozen section comes back positive, what will you do once the... Well, you know, I would, I would extend my lateral excision on the concern level of the bundle, but uh, you know how many studies have shown that these uh, second sections are finally negative. Uh, so. Okay, so no. what's the point in getting a frozen section if you, it, will, it will not change the attitude? Well, I didn't ask for them to change my attitude, but I think Vito wants to know the specimen earlier than we know uh, usually. Uh, Roland, why are you not using uh, two colored stitches? No, no, no. Like we are doing it, dyed and dyed. No, I'm using two stitches of the same color. And as you can see, the tricky moment is the, the finding of the bladder neck, mainly when it is nicely preserved. Here we have the anterior aspect, but we still have to fish the posterior lip to make sure that we are 
in the appropriate level. And I have a problem because my what it's the about second the time that my needle aspect, holder uh, of drops. The leg. I'm sorry. Roland, Roland, we have some question about the posterior aspect of a bladder neck. Yes. Uh, some people are, are wondering if there is not some uh, prostatic tissue here. No, I, I don't think right so. Here. I don't think can so. You, yeah, can, can you just... Yes, you, you have you it just in the, front you of you. Take, uh, it's the posterior lip and it's quietly, it's quite smooth and there is no other tissue there. We had a very clear... Uh, Landmark for dividing it. Uh, I have no doubt about it here. Because there is some proposal about a small biopsy of this zone when, it's, uh, uh, when there is a doubt. Well, we might do that in, in case of doubt, but uh, I, I don't know if my colleagues have another impression, but we, we had no questioning about that during the, the section. My colleagues say no, they have no trouble with it. Can you just expose with the, yeah, like this. So we are. It's okay, the margin is good. Have you any uh, margin of the bladder neck? Not, no, not of the bladder neck. No. The left upper uh, margin. The, mm, not yet the bladder neck. Okay. If you need, I can do it. From the moderating table, okay. this looks definitely like a small median lobe. Okay, the next slide will be on the, on the neck. Just a few minutes. Yes. So let, let us put the left suture to the left side. Ah. Okay, let's leave it there. It's a bit long for what we need, so we can get into trouble. The Rocco is a little bit disturbing here. And the second stitch is again in the way.
Okay. Let's leave it there. So we have achieved three catches on the bladder side on the right and two on the urethral side as you have seen so that traction will be exerted on the bladder and not on the urethra. And we are now completing the same approach on the left side at 7 o'clock and keeping in mind to stay lateral to the former catch in order to avoid making knots unwillingly. Uh, Roland, we are leaving you for a moment because I think Günther is looking for some sound. Okay. Günther?
Uh, I have some good news for me and for you. Uh, the, there was nothing at the bladder neck margin. And, uh, Thank you. So you finally took the biopsy. Thank you. No, we, we had the frozen section on the, the prostate side. And uh, there is nothing there. And we had some troubleshooting problems with my first suture, so that I had to start from the very beginning again, but this was not a problem. And as you have seen, we have uh, completed the posterior layer, passed the catheter through the anastomosis, and now we are proceeding with the additional stitches at 3 and 9 o'clock. It is already achieved on the left side. We have to place here a stitch inside out at 3 o'clock. Roland, are you always alternating? So I just do one side and then the other side? Or uh, why are you alternating? Progressing as long as the vision is good and uh, not impairing the other side. And uh, by this means, coming slowly from both sides to 12 o'clock. On the, on the left side at 10 o'clock. Because I think, I, I think the running suture is an advantage to proceed quickly. So when you just focus on one side and then you go just to the middle edge, you, you can use the advantage of, as you do, as pulling on, on the thread and thereby approaching the tissue better. Well, it helps you, in my hand, a little bit to you know, speed up the procedure rather than always taking a new needle from the other side. No, but uh, as far as we don't have troubleshooting problems which happen in 1% of cases in, uh, in the survey where we have uh, tested the model on the long term in several centers, uh, the suture takes 20 minutes as an average. And uh, you see here that I'm completing the hemi running circle on the right side. I'm re already at 10 o'clock. On yeah, the left. Exactly, this is what I meant, exactly. And uh, I, had, I made a, a second use stitch between 9 and 10 o'clock in order to achieve the suture with one thread on each side of the, of the anastomosis. And we will see after that catch if we need an additional stitch or not. This is 12 o'clock right side. And probably I need an additional stitch made forehand, right hand on the final left side here at 11. What, what happens if one of these needles breaks? As a, we, we, we had this. I just want to know what, what are you doing then? Then I'm uh, shortening the thread and start with a new one and uh, make a knot to lock at the level of the break. Oh. Because we, I, I did sometimes the other way, I, I just elongated with the other stitch the, the, uh, or continued the anastomosis uh, until I reached the thread which, where the needle so was I think broken. we are completing you, now yeah. and uh, I will cut the first needle and take it out to ease my nothing. And just end it as usually here. And How we long will do you so uh, far the, the, the catheter? The catheter is still the, the initial catheter which might have been armed during the section or suturing so that we will replace it after the completion of the knots, right after this uh, maneuver. And for, many, for, for how many days you keep it in? Ideal length uh, is five to six days to avoid uh, edema at catheter retrieval, which is uh, responsible for 15% of acute retention uh, when you retrieve your catheter around day three. 
and uh, we only see it again in uh, about 1% of cases if we wait until day 5 at least. Zoom in. Yeah. And uh, are you performing a cystogram routine? Yes, we still do that. Take out the catheter. And uh, we have 2% of uh, leakage at the cystogram needing uh, additional days for catheter, but otherwise uh, we generally have a, a watertight and what are your ideas about suspension stitches? No, we don't do that. Uh, no, we don't do that. Uh, I have no idea about it, about the usefulness. No you, have you have seen that we have made some uh, suspension of the posterior aspect of the of the sphincter, but beside this, oh, this is not tight. So the rocker, yes. Well, we will solve that. Give me a five millimeter clip. Clips. Yeah, yeah. Ah, this is nothing. There is no clip. Ah, again, no clip. Oh, the clip is ready. Okay, we will now change the catheter. Okay, we will now change the catheter and test the anastomosis. Roland. Yes. Roland, do you hear us? Uh, you're not afraid that the clip uh, will migrate into the urethra and then so in the bladder mm -hmm. and you will have a bladder stone with a clip in the center? Well, this one is very outside of the anastomosis. I have seen some... Uh... No, I'm not happy with that catheter. Def deflate. I'm no, I don't know where I am. I didn't see the balloon coming. Um, we were not in the bladder. Give me have you taken out the T-man catheter? Have you taken out the catheter already? Yeah. Not yet, not yet. We have a very rigid mm -hmm. catheter, which is not good for this uh, anastomosis because it's too straight and goes straightly posterior. For such uh, situations, we have developed uh, a Benike with a central perforation that you can insert a guide wire and you can manipulate uh, this into the, into the bladder if, it's, if you are in doubt. Would you do a flexible cystoscopy in, in case if you are in doubt? Yes, I would do that. Mm. Not too too stiff. It's again a uh, elastic. Yeah. 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 Maybe it's better. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Uh, gel. No, it's okay. I'm watching the direction. So what are you doing at the moment? I, uh, I'm catheterizing. Are you the trying to? The so you are the bladder outside, with so you are uh, just putting in the catheter at the moment? Uh, yes. 
And, yes. it, and it doesn't pass in or out This sounds no. much better. And we will now irrigate uh -huh. with the, the suction device to have a large volume. Forceps. Cocker, cocker. <laughs> Thank you. Usually we have a bladder syringe on the table at the end of the procedure yeah, yeah, yeah. to but wash we do out this. the bladder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do this. Move back. No, il vago flame. Is it irrigating? Yes. Don't see it. Where is it? It's not in the proper space. It isn't, eh? It's behind. Let's have a look. No, cat is there. Okay. Move it away. Did you deflate? Deflate. There is another situa uh, solution is to cut the suture. No, we will uh, cut the anterior suture, retrieve the, the thread. Do you want, and uh, you want, do you want a, a Freudian bag? No, I, I used uh, a Dufour, but uh, still doesn't work. So we, I will cut the suture. Four. I will not uh, show this if oh. you cut again. Moi, c'est pas mal la suture. Il faut, il faut regarder la suture pendant qu'on met. Il est sorti par là, peut-être. C'est si on va les remettre. No, no, it's not in appropriate tension. We will. Anyway, uh, have to it's pull on it. It's teaching to show that when something is wrong, the best thing is to start all over again. Okay, uh, not a double one, eh? just a single uh, bio Single? Yeah, okay. uh, 20 centimeter is fine. This stroke carries. Really? Maybe we go just now to the other room until you have find what you want to do no, in this situation. No. And uh, we look what Günther is going Günther on. You could see, and we will place the catheter under direct vision, and then complete again the anterior ah, aspect. So we can demount slowly. This was nine o'clock and ten o'clock. Okay, this is enough. Ah, so and now you could use this. Uh, once again, I see. And we will just. So, take can it. you in try to insert the catheter now? I think this is. Yes, work. this is enough to insert a catheter. Yes. But I need to secure yeah. these threads with my needle holders. No, no, no needle for the moment. Just have him waiting like this on one side. There is a knot so that we will cut it there. Okay, so the threads are secured so that the, the traction is optimal on the posterior aspects, and now we will check the arrival of the catheter. Uh, can we? And this will be the final catheter in this time. Sure. 
Okay, can you push it? I will check with the forceps inside. Ah. Let's wait and clean. Okay. Push slowly. So there is, a, there is the question, we, we can discuss it here among us, what would we do in this situation? I, I can say there is a, this is a nice thing to do, you open just and then do continue with additional stitches. The only thing is you might be really sure that the catheter is coming now, now because it, sometimes it despite slowly, this uh, opening, the catheter is still going behind. I don't think so. And this is a little bit a problem, so we will see what's going on. The other option would be to use a Benike that you can buy with stalls. I have it, which is, has a central perforation, and what's you can, wrong? without redoing the anastomosis, for, for, for put it in and for, uh, insert a guide wire. Ones that are even used in so open the, surgery you that see have the foley an, uh, is central perforation. You see, now it's easy. Straight into the, the right position, okay. and it's much yeah. less troubleshooting. Okay. No? But now you have to continue with. Do, yes, are you doing now, we now have, another we'll continuous suture or the are you anterior aspect and we will stabilize both uh, former threads with this new suture? So you can use one suture and and uh, suture it to the threads. Finally. Exactly. Hmm. How long is the suture that you are using now? Uh, I, I took a 20 centimeter to be sure to have uh, sufficient length. We are starting again here mm -hmm. at 10 o'clock, as you can see. And immediately loading the other side. I don't see my little small leg. Yeah, it's That's there. Fine. So in a few minutes you will have a small talk of uh, 10 minutes maximum on the anastomosis done by... Uh, I don't know if you are asking a question because we have no longer any sound. No, no, we are with you. Do you hear us? Yeah, yeah, when you speak I hear you. So, so now we are just watching the way <laughs> so you are going, but, but you are doing the whole circumferential part now with this uh, yes, continuous the suture. Part. Yes, we, so we Except, I mean, yes, yeah, the anterior part. Yeah, we the small legs. Okay, maybe we just now move uh, back to Günther, because we can watch you while doing this. Okay. Yeah, just Günther, if you can go, give some comments, because we will stop... Uh, uh, the, the discussion together and then come back to you in uh, 10 minutes. So now if you can 
just make a small comment be before uh, going to a talk and coming back after. Can, can you... Hello, Gunther?